Good morning everybody, hope you're well today. So we're going to do a quick update video, uh, kind of a garage update really, I haven't done one of these in a while. Um, if you've been watching the other videos, you'll know I've got a new bike, which is the Vosges DSX 500, or 500 DSX, <laughs> it's my bike and I always get the name wrong. And you'll also know that I came off on the track bike, and so we're going to have a little look at those bikes and I'll let you know what I'm doing with them. So here's another little project, actually, while we're here. Strictly speaking, it's not bike related, but making a lid to keep the rain out of Susie's fire pit um, or fireball. No good having a fireball if it's full of water. And we'll come down here just to talk about the bikes. Uh, so let's talk about the Daytona. Just rotate the camera around. So yeah, this is the state of the Daytona as stands. Um, I think I've bent this little clip, but I can either bend that back or I've got a spare. These air intakes are, are always pretty gnarly, they're okay. Uh, I do have a spare engine cover in the garage, so I'll get dig that out. Um, this one, I'll probably just leave that or maybe blow it over with a quick bit of uh, spray paint. That's fine. Um, now, the front fairing uh, is where a lot of the damage is located. And yesterday my dad came up with some of this uh so it's p40 probably all of you probably know what that is it's, it's actually fiberglass and resin mixed together and you can actually see on the, on the side there's one of the glass fibers so what we did is got this net uh, metal mesh um put that in the areas that needed strengthening so if i just rotate this over gently um you put this mesh you can probably see some underneath put that down there stick the fiberglass uh, resin after you've mixed hardener into it um, and then you apply more fiberglass on top and we've put quite a lot in there which i might have actually put too much because it's now much more rigid than the rest of the fairing same here like if you look along here we've cut strips of this metal mesh put fiberglass on it and it's now a strong this is now the strong part of the fairing it's actually very rigid probably a little bit too rigid it might be harder to fit now but never mind, you know, it's one of the first times I've uh, used the fiberglass uh, repair. So, say buy a new fairing, we'll try and repair that. Um, the top layer, I'm going to use body filler. So we'll have to sand this back and apply some filler and try and get that looking half reasonable. Okay, so that's the front fairing. Everything else is okay on that. Rear fairing. Uh, we've still got a pretty sizable hole here, which... I don't know whether I'm going to attempt to fill because it's going to be quite hard to get that shape. My dad did suggest actually, if we come around here, use this side as a mold and then use that to replicate the shape over here. So put uh, Vaseline on that side of the fairing, cling film uh, over the top, fiberglass to make a mold and then use that shape and then attach that piece as it were to this. So. I don't know what I'll do with that. If I find one that comes up on eBay, I, I'll put, might just I might just buy it because they're not that expensive. The tail sections and the hassle of getting that looking half decent uh, might not be worth it. Uh, it also complicates the matter because this under tray bolts. If you can see that, with Allen keys or Allen bolts into there, so it all holds it together. Which when you're doing at quite high speed, you don't really want this flapping around with the wind, so. I'll have to figure out what to do with that. So that's the Daytona. Oh, yeah. These uh, carbon heel plates were a birthday present off my brother, so shout out to him. Thanks a lot, James, for that. Um, yeah, and tyres on the bike. They have probably got another few track days out of them, to be honest. We're not down at the wear markers yet. Um, these are Conti Sport Attack 4 tyres. I've, I've found them really good. Uh, I've enjoyed you know, riding around on them, they seem grippy enough to me. Um, but yeah, good tyres. Okay, right, enough about that. Let's come over to the Vosges. So, the Vosges. Just turn the ignition on. We are now at, I think, 600, 667 miles. So, they say to do the second service, which is basically an oil change, at 1,000 kilometres. So, I'm going to perform that service now. The other thing I need to adjust is to um, reset the tyre pressure monitoring system. There is a way to do that, 
my, I've lost my connection to the front tire uh, pressure monitoring system. Rear is okay, but I need to check the uh, front. So you basically have to supposedly deflate the tire, put it into reset mode on the dash, um, and then what you, I can't remember how to do it, I'll have to look it up, show you, and then you reinflate the tire, and then when it gets to the set correct pressure, then it resets everything, supposedly. So let's have a look at that. But for now, forget about that, let's do the oil change. So I've run the bike for a little bit, heated all the oil up, and now we'll try and drop the oil. Uh, I'm going to replace it with Magnatech uh, by Castrol. Don't really particularly care that much about what oil goes in, as long as it's the correct viscosity. So I've got 10W40, just got this because it was on, on offer at Euro Car Parts really. Um, Castrol is obviously a known brand, so maybe that's slightly better, maybe it isn't. I'm using genuine Vosges parts, so here's the oil filter and obviously the replacement copper gasket. I've got the black plastic matting down because last time I did this oil went all over the blocks uh, which didn't make me very popular. So, <laughs> so this time we're doing it on the grass and if we spill on the oil hopefully it will be caught on the matting. Well, that's good. Much less me less mess than last time. Obviously, if you've got this air hole open here, it doesn't even splash or bubble. It just goes straight in and air gets expelled here, so it works quite well. Okay, next job is to remove this oil filter. Now, I have to be careful because the exhaust might still be a little hot. There you go. Blah. So it's working. Just loosen that up a little bit. I've got this at the perfect temperature. Everything's nice and warm, but it's not hot enough to burn me. Okay. There you go. Look at that. Didn't spill a drop. Remarkable. Only Susie's here to see this. When you're assembling this, you need to remember to put a little bit of oil around the ring, rubber ring, like so. Oops, I don't think I even showed you that. There you go. So when you assemble, just add a little bit of oil onto the seal. And then don't get confused between the old and the new. Uh, installation is the opposite of removal. Right, all the oil is almost drained out. Um, the only thing I need to do is just refit this copper washer to the sump plug. And what I've done probably last time is over tighten it a little bit because I've, I've properly crushed the washer. Uh, I did put it to 30 newton meters, what they suggest, but let's see if we can get this uh, yeah, washer away. There you go. Okay, so new copper washer. Fitted to 12 millimeter bolt. Let's put that back in. Right, let's just tighten up this sump plug. I'm not going to do it as tight this time. A little bit more. That's tight. Okay, that'll stop oil coming out there. Clean oil. Um, for this, I'm going to put the bike on its center stand just so I can get a clear view of the oil level as I add oil. Okay, bike's on the centre stand, now we'll fill the oil up. Hello. Hey. Back already? The Fiat 500. Yes, yeah, so you like the Fiat 500, do you? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, everybody. I've We're just uh, made no sa mess at all. Saga brother. number two is happening here. Did you show them the blocks that have been replaced? <laughs> I talked about the blocks, so I didn't show them. But this is, this is, this is clean as a whistle. Out. It's clean as a whistle, honestly. I haven't made any mess at all. Look at this. Good. Good. You okay? Right. Yeah. Want something to eat? That'd be nice, yeah. So, why do you like the car so much? It's so mechanical. Like, why don't we drive on old cars? You realise how much they've come up? Like, 
okay, I thought the same with like, obviously I've always had bigger nice cars yeah. before. If I've had a, not a new car that's been bigger. But it, yeah, it's just amazing. Zippy, like it's got a sunroof. Everything's, it's got beepers. It's got fuel consumption. If you don't feel it, you'll love it. You should go somewhere in it. But the Abarth version. Yeah. I like them. I've always liked them. I just, they're like a mini to me. I think they're that cool. Yeah, it's like, it's that kind of cool. It's got the berry protein shake, isn't it? That'd be really nice. Or a butter bomb. Yeah. I'm going to make some banana. I'm going to do my count today. Good idea. How can you run it without oil in it? I'm just checking the oil's the right level. Try this. Oh, hello. Delicious. World's biggest strawberry. Right, typical British weather. It's just started to pouring, so I'm gonna have to end the video there. Just started to absolutely pour. I had to put everything away, but I did pretty much get the oil change done. Checked the level with the bike upright, ran the engine, or primed the oil pump, ran the engine. Um, seems to be all good, so that's one thing less to worry about. And the bike's getting ready for longer tours, um, which I will document on the channel. So until then guys, I'll catch you in the next one.